Hello from Southern California. This is the DealershipNews.com podcast, where we bring you the new and old school insight into the business of selling cars and service so you have the foresight to grow your dealership and stay ahead of the competition. I'm Kelly Kleinman, and here is our show. And today we are with Clint Burns, the CEO of Next Up. Clint, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me on. A pleasure, indeed. Well, I'm going to preface our quick cast here today with uh, an anecdote from my past. Uh, I used to sell consumer electronics with the Federated Electronic Superstores back in the day. It dates me a little bit. But when bonuses were offered during the holidays uh, based on sales performance, I ended up in the parking lot with more, on more than one occasion with uh, a fellow employee. Now, if we had next up, that never would have happened. Uh, the culture would have stayed shall we say collegial, right? And everyone would have had an equal crack at closing a, a big deal or selling a video camera. Sure. Uh, <laughs> it might seem simple enough, but next up in our estimation is a must have, especially with the kind of cultural diversity that's within dealerships these days and, and how they're so competitive, you need to have something like that. With that said, sir, you have just won the best managed retail sales process. Hmm. I know it's a big one. MRSP vendor of the year, so congratulations. Wow. Thank you. We, we appreciate that. You know, we've, uh, we like to be identified, especially for as long as we've been in the industry, just kind of picking away at things. Well, it's a simple, it's simple enough, isn't it though? You know, but it could get crazy in a dealership. Um, what was the genesis of, of the concept even? Well, I mean, if you, you kind of know the history of, of myself and the company, we, we came from CRM and we realized CRM was only successful if one salespeople would log customers into it and two take the time to use it yet. In our industry, we create this conflict where, as a manager, I used to tell people to go help the customers out a lot. On the other hand, we tell them to go do follow-up. And so how, do, how could they allocate time to do so? And so an up system, if you will, was always in our industry, but were kind of looked at negatively. Um, they were one-dimensional, and they don't really work very well. And so we kind of took the concept of an up system or a queue of how they handle customers and just developed it from there. And obviously, technology has helped along the way. I mean, even when we started... 13 years ago, it was on a touchscreen computer, and we still kind of provide a tablet or a touchscreen computer at the dealership, but now everything's global app based. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it makes, it makes all the sense in the world. Tell me a little bit about what you guys have going on for 2020, and uh, how was 2019 for you? We, we, we feel it went really well for you. We, we spoke to several people who are using the uh, solution and they seem to be pretty happy with it. It seems to work just fine. And uh, I think you're going to have a big 2020. What, what's your, uh, what does your crystal ball tell you? I think, you know, well, 2020 is going to be phenomenal. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here it is January. We've already started out really strong. Um, NADA is just around the corner. But the biggest thing is I think everyone's really starting to focus on guests for customer experience, right? We keep hearing it. We keep hearing it. Look, <clears throat> everyone's been sold that they need a digital retailing experience. And I think that's because consumers are so fed up with what happens when they go to a dealership. Either there are too many salespeople out front ready to greet customers or nobody to help them. And so dealerships need to decide and define their retail process, how they're going to handle it, and have a consistent approach to how they're going to handle their customers coming in so that they can offer the proper guest experience. Otherwise, they're going to lose, and our industry is going to lose. So yeah. look, we depend on the dealers, uh, and the, depender, the dealers depend on vendors. they got to pick the right vendors for their business, right? There's obviously a vendor for every vendor now in our space, but right. customers are still coming into showrooms, right? Even if they, they decide to transact the majority of the way through online, they are going to show up at the store at some point or another, and the dealerships have to be prepared and ready to offer the proper guest experience. Yeah. And, you know, back to my anecdote, there's a lot of culture. The, the person that I spoke to was hardcore. I mean, I spoke to, I didn't speak to my, well, I threw him out into the parking lot. He, he was a hardcore guy. You know, he wanted to, he wanted to outsell everybody. He was trying to grab every VCR and, and, uh, and uh, camera sale that there possibly was. It, it got to be a little bit belligerent. Um, are you seeing benefit to next up with the kind of cultural and competitive nature, cultural diversity, and competitive nature of, those in today's dealerships and how does it help keep employees employed as opposed to uh, having the crazy turnover numbers that we have? Yeah. Well, it's a little twofold on that question. So yeah. one, we all want aggressive salespeople, but 
what kind of aggressive do you want? Aggressive good, meaning something that's really following up and getting customers in, reducing that cost of sale, but really focusing on helping the customer's needs. <clears throat> the salesperson that takes 100 customers and sells you 20 cars, is he a better salesperson that talks to 50 and sells you 15, right? We talked about baseball earlier prior to this recording, and you don't know somebody's batting average unless you know how many times they were at bat, right? So this is the thing that you really need to hold concept-wise, a consistent approach, but hold people accountable to have the way you want your showroom run. Now, as far as employee turnover, yeah. the reason why our industry has got such a high turnover is because of the culture. We know that, right? Um, if you put a consistent approach that people can win at, and a defined approach that people can win at, everyone can adhere to it and be successful. The other thing is you're not just people oriented. You can become process oriented so that putting different people in as needed, they just know exactly what to do. Now, you know, obviously <laughs> you mentioned that the, the parking lot situation, I had situations when I was on the line, right? Where we you know, got called into the back lot to take care of situations that happen. I don't think that happens anymore. A lot of the time nowadays we're hearing from the dealerships that salespeople aren't aggressive enough, right? They can't find anybody to help somebody or they're in the back lot instead of like the old days of having a Coke and a smoke, they're at their desk playing Angry Birds, you know, or they're on social. So again, there's just some inherent problems and concerns that happen in the showrooms that, that can be easily corrected. And uh, unfortunately, not everyone uh, has had an opportunity to see what we do, to see how it fits into place. Well, look, at we're looking forward to uh, seeing what you do a lot in 2020. Clint Burns, CEO of Next Up, thanks so much for joining us. And we look forward to uh, seeing you up at uh, the NADA conference coming up in just a couple of weeks. Yeah, thanks, Kelly. I hope you can stop by for sure. A pleasure. Take care and congratulations again. <laughs>